go, Brandon. Hey guys, as you all know, we have some elections coming up this November, and this is going to be a pretty important election cycle. While I do think there's going to be pretty much a bloodbath where Republicans, and of course we're going to have a bunch of rhinos mixed in there, but Republicans should easily take the House, more than likely take the Senate, and just absolutely destroy Democrats because of the, all the failed policies of the Biden administration and all the wackos and screw-ups that the Biden administration has in there from they're screwing the border up, they're screwing foreign policy up, they're screwing the economy up. We all have less money in our pockets. So someone's going to pay the price. What usually happens at that point is it's a pretty big shift in power as far as which political party is going to retain control. And clearly it's very obvious what's going to happen. Democrats don't stand a chance. With that being said, it's important that the right people get in there. You know my thoughts about Republicans. Republicans are just as corrupt and become just as corrupt as Democrats. However, a lot of times they will toe the company line or the party line if that's the right thing to do or the popular thing to do. So we just have to hope that it's a popular thing to do. But those people who have a proven track record back there, like Dr. Oz, those people have already shown their true colors. Now these people are in a position to get an easy win. However, they're getting it based on popularity of their name, not the policies that they stand on. Case in point, Dr. Oz is not a Second Amendment advocate. He put out a recent video and it's laughable. I'm, I'm going to let you guys make the comments in the comment section below as to all the screwy, stupid things that we see that we know that this is not a gun guy. Check this video out. This is his most recent campaign video to prove to us that he is your Second Amendment guy. My father taught me how to handle my first gun. I taught my son Oliver how to do the same. I've been shooting and hunting my whole life. So when people say I won't support guns, they're dead wrong. Boom! Other conservatives know that I'm strong on the Second Amendment. Ted Nugent, Rick Perry, President Trump. But our Second Amendment is not just about hunting. It's about our constitutional right to protect ourselves from intruders or an overly intrusive government. So as your next U.S. Senator, I will fight for our constitutional rights. Yeah, I mean, I was sold on the camouflage pants. That made me a true believer. I'm not a country music fan, but I guess the country music playing was a solid thing that this guy, he's hes one of the gun guys, you know? There you go with the stereotypes that all gun guys must be camo-wearing, country music listening people. That shows you how little of a gun guy that he is. And the very fact that his, his campaign website has less to say about it than that, other than that video, tells you even more. Tell me about the Second Amendment instead. That's what I asked you about. But Dr. Oz has way more things that have made him anti-gun, not just this pathetic video that he's got. This guy has had his own TV show, as you know, and again, that's why he's leading the pack right now because of name recognition and popularity. But in his own TV show, he revealed openly and with glee his anti-gun position as far as feeling like red flag gun laws were a good idea. As far as feeling like it's okay to confiscate firearms from a person if you think they might be a threat. They've not been a threat. They've not shown to be a threat. You just see signs, warning signs, that you would like to use as a way to remove their guns from them, which means infringing upon their Second Amendment rights. Here's a quick couple of little clips from his TV show where he talked about that. Another thing that may help protect you and your family are red flag laws, which can stop down more mass shootings according to new research. Generally, how do these red flag laws work? So red flag laws are a way of better identifying individuals who are becoming increasingly dangerous either to themselves or to the public at large. And generally what they do is allow individuals who are, are close to uh, people who are becoming dangerous, such as friends, family members, sometimes co-workers, teachers, to petition courts directly to say, hey, this person is becoming dangerous. I'm seeing these signs. Can we intervene specifically with this person to disarm them and then hopefully reroute them toward treatment if that's appropriate and to get them to a better place uh, where they're no longer dangerous before we give them back uh, either firearms or other dangerous objects. What are the red flag signs? What are the issues that you should be looking for if, in, if to determine if someone around you could be a danger? Right. So first we're going to look at weapons, right? Does the person have access to weapons? Do they own a gun? 
Do they have family members um, who have guns in the home? Behavioral um, changes, personality changes, super important also. We're looking at, you know, classic signs of depression, really. Um, isolation, decreased sleeping, decreased eating, um, changes in expressed mood. The purpose is to allow us to identify people who are at risk that no one else has figured out are at risk. Let me push you a little bit, because the issue of being anonymous mm -hmm. is, for me, vital. If someone's already dangerous, a coworker, you don't want to make yourself a target by telling everybody, hey, I think you're dangerous, right? So I, well, would, 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 I th how many of you would be more comfortable if it was anonymous? Yeah. So I think part of the hope I gather is that we'll make a, a system so that I can call in and say, I, there's evidence besides my testimony that this person's dangerous. Look at their Facebook feed or social media postings or comments they've made to other coworkers besides me. Now, if that wasn't enough, Dr. Oz had a 2019 op-ed that he wrote with Michael Royce and another doctor where they just went on and on and on about all the anti-gun, gun control stuff. I mean, it's almost like somebody flipped a switch with this guy that he became one of the leading anti-gun people out there, then suddenly flipped a switch and said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and be pro-gun now. These are some of the things that he talked about. He said, clearly we are in the middle of a serious public health crisis and war at home and something needs to be done. This is one thing that I've warned about in a lot of my videos before. With COVID, these people are using public health crisis and public safety now is a way to implement some of these policies because if you'll remember, they stripped a lot of Americans' liberties and freedoms from them by declaring that COVID was a public health crisis. Once you create this category that allows you to turn off all of the other things out there constitutionally that we have as rights, then suddenly you've created a category that these people can use and abuse whenever they want to. And again, that punch phrase that they're using is public health crisis, public safety crisis, health crisis, public safety, however you want to word it, this is what they're using. And that's exactly what Dr. Oz is talking about right here. They consistently and purposely call this, as far as guns go, a public health crisis. He goes on to act like the cost of what happens with firearms is somehow our fault by saying the average annual cost of inpatient hospitalizations for firearm industry injury from 2010 through 2015 was over 911 million. Medicare and Medicaid covered 45% of those costs. Now, what does that tell you? If Medicaid and Medicare were covering almost half of the costs of gun-related type injuries, we know what that means, right? That means there is a certain class of people who are not insured by their own private insurance, they're insured by government insurance and government coverage. And statistically, I know people are gonna say that I'm racist for saying this, but I'm basing this on statistics, real facts and real numbers. If half of the people who are getting hurt out there are using federal funds like Medicare and Medicaid, for their own treatment whenever they shoot or they shoot somebody else. What does that tell you? It tells you that this is mostly inner city people where the vast majority of these gun-related crimes take place. You can connect the dots however you want to. You can call me all the names you want to. This is factual data that I am simply using to make a point and we all know that what I'm saying is true. Just because it hurts a few people's feelings doesn't make what I'm saying any less true. It just means you can't handle the truth. Oz went on to brag about reinstituting the assault rifle ban, which was a national assault weapons ban signed into law in 1994. It was allowed to expire 10 years later. Now they're saying that as if it's a bad thing. What they don't mention in here, and they pride themselves on a couple of other things, saying that since then approximately 1.3 million assault rifles have been sold each year, along with eight to 15 billion rounds of ammunition, as if that is a bad thing. In other words, they're trying to use this to paint a negative picture. What they do not include in here is whenever the sunset on that particular 1994 ban, that actual crime related to firearms went down. They don't mention that in here. This is not a secret. You don't have to dig for that information that gun-related injuries, crimes, deaths have gone down since 1994. You don't have to search for that. It's common knowledge, it's everywhere. 
They don't mention that here because it doesn't make their case. Now, here's some other things that they lie about and they talk about that they would like to see. Remember, I want to remind you guys, this is your pro-Second Amendment candidate in Pennsylvania. I want you guys to remember this. This is his running as a Republican for the senatorial seat in the state of Pennsylvania. These are the things that he supported three years ago in writing. Of U.S. voters, 70% support banning high-capacity magazines and 68% support banning all assault-style weapons. While we know that's a lie and that's not true, which means he's willing to lie and not tell the truth, we also know that he's simply making these things up to make his case. He is clearly stating that he feels like standard capacity magazines of more than 10 rounds, in our case, mostly 30 round magazines for AR-15s, he feels like those should be banned. He also feels like AR-15s should be banned, which by the way, he's actually shown using both in his little pro second amendment, look at me, I'm pro second amendment video here. He's got an AR-15 and he has a standard capacity magazine that holds more than 10 rounds, high capacity, which in his story, three years ago, he claimed he wanted both to be banned and lied about saying that the American people also wanted those things banned. If he really thought that the majority of Americans supported banning both of those, do you really think he would have included those in his campaign ad? No, he wouldn't. So now you know that what he wrote about years ago, he knew was a lie and he knew was not accurate. And he knew the American people did not support that because there's no way he would have included something in his own video if he knew the majority of people were against it. He outed himself as a liar on that. He goes on to state that background checks on all gun sales are favored by 88%, 69% of NRA members too. This is again, not true. What he's taking is, and I've mentioned this in other videos, he's taking statistics that somebody took on a New York City street corner or a Chicago street corner where they simply asked people, do you believe in background checks for new gun purchases? And they say yes, or, they, or let me let me. I don't want to. I don't want to do what they do. I don't want to make it make this a, looking like a, like a lie of some sort. The question is more like it's more generic. Like, do you believe in background checks for purchasing firearms? And people go, well, yeah, because most people already know that we have background checks. It's mandated when you're buying from a federal firearms licensed dealer. It's mandatory, and they all require that you fill out a background check. What they're not saying is, and what they really mean is, they want to outlaw private sales between law-abiding individuals. They want that to go away. Why? It doesn't do anything with crime. It's just another way to control firearms, or they think would control firearms. It does nothing to do with crime because those, those are already being sold <laughs> illegally. So nothing happens from a criminal standpoint. No violence is ever going to somehow go down as a result of universal background checks. It's just going to prevent people from giving, willing guns, uh, pri again, private sales, things like that, loaning firearms to somebody who may want to go hunting. That's all it's going to do. So again, he's backing something that is a known lie and really uh, kind of, it's really a sinister thing how they put that up as far as the background checks because they word this to get the answer they want so they can put the polls out that support the cause that they want it to support. He goes on to say that 78% of voters support a mandatory waiting period of three days after a gun purchase before it can be taken home. Really? 78%? That's almost 80%. That's like four out of five people. Four out of five people. Do you know anybody that supports that? I'm serious. Do you know anyone? If they're saying that 80% of people support this, there's a lot of gun owners in America. There's hundreds of millions of gun owners in America. Do you know one that supports waiting periods? Do you know one? Just one. Not four out of five. Do you know one out of five? Do you know one out of 10? Do you know one out of 100? Gun owners, people in general that support that. Definitely not gun owners. I know zero. I know zero gun owners who support a waiting period for firearms because I'm going to go back to what I continue to say about every other bogus law, including red flag gun laws. If you are not a criminal, you should not have to wait for a firearm. I am not a criminal until I cre create or commit a crime. Do not treat me like a criminal until I've committed a crime. 
So I should be able to obtain that firearm the moment I want it. So no, I don't know anyone that supports this. And by Dr. Oz saying and printing that 78% of people support that means he is a liar and he's supporting something that is an outright lie. Again, you can stand on whatever street corner you want and wh whatever kind of community you want to, to try to get the answers to a poll that you want to support your lies. But you got to work pretty hard to try to find 80% of people that take a poll to say that they support limitations and, and creating the amount of time somebody has to wait, any kind of a waiting period on purchasing a brand new firearm. You got to work pretty hard at that. So I know this is an outright lie that he's pushing here. And he goes on the Trump of the New Zealand bans on guns. He says that the New Zealand parliament managed to pass legislation banning most semi-automatic and military style weapons complete with a buyback program in just nine days after a mass shooting that killed 51 at two mosques in Christ Church. This was in New Zealand, right? Notice it's semi-automatic weapons too. If he's a true gun guy, like he states he is on his website, then he knows that semi-automatic weapons is not just these evil military-style weapons that he thinks should have been banned, that he stated openly should be banned, that he also uses in his video here. But he's also talking about every single firearm that is a self-loading firearm that shoots, including this Glock that he's shooting in his video, including one of the shotguns that he's holding that is a self-loading semi-automatic firearm. So he's trumpeting this cause in New Zealand where they banned all these weapons yet he's using them in his campaign ad. So who's being disingenuous? Who's dishonest here? Is it me for pointing out these obvious things that he has done? Or is it him for actually going against all the things that he has a massive track record of supporting in the past, and now suddenly he's flipped? And we're all supposed to just ignore all the data that we have on this guy and all the facts out there that's in print for everybody to see. Now, in his defense, and I'm certainly not defending him, Dave McCormick, who is the next leading candidate who's running against him, those are the two leading candidates in that Pennsylvania Senate seat, is not much better. Uh, Dave also posts on his website that we're led to believe that somehow he is a massive Second Amendment supporter and he's fighting for your rights because, here it is, he's a hunter. He's hunted his whole life. So this guy's going to fight for my Second Amendment rights. Here we go again. So what do you pick? You know what? I look at it this way. I don't have any more confidence in McCormick than I do in Oz, but I've got a lot of negatives on Oz. If you want to do a checklist of how many times somebody has been on record of being anti-gun, I kind of got to go with McCormick over here because he certainly outed himself a lot fewer times than Oz has. Oz is a snake. Oz is a wolf in sheep's clothing. If you get him in there, he is going to vote for red flag gun laws. He is going to vote for and support any kind of ban on magazines, on AR-15s. He's going to all do it in the name of public safety. And the sad thing is, just because he's some for some reason a doctor, he's going to be looked at as being this person that needs to be on this public health crisis team that's going to be out there. So he will be one of the leaders on that particular team that's going to be putting out different measures to mitigate what they're calling gun violence and to try to limit it, that's going to all be gun control type measures that will limit firearm access, ammunition access. And this guy has a record that we already see and we know where he stands on it, yet you're going to vote for him to be the guy leading that in the future in the Senate? We need to take this position that the Senate is going to have for flipping this. If we're going to get all these awesome things and get these wacko Democrats, these anti-gun Democrats out of there, for God's sake, let's at least put somebody in there who's pro-Second Amendment. Let's go, Brandon.